Hello, good morning, I guess who's feeling loads better? So I had a couple of days pretty much in bed, I mean I was editing and stuff, but I was in bed and I felt absolutely wretched, but it's just blown out of my system more or less. It's got a little bit of a sniffle, that's all now. Anyway, I'm feeling absolutely brilliant today. So IB and I, uh, he needs to work for a few hours. I'm actually, I've got nothing pressingly urgent to do, so I'm gonna catch up with my comments, so I'm looking forward to that. I need to get some money out twice, because <laughs> I need to pay for my flute today. I've been getting my flute repaired all the time I've been here. I have two, I have a spare one, and I have my main one that I normally use, and that's been in the flute doctors all this time. Oh, it's had so much work done to it. So I'm very excited to go and get that today. So that's on the agenda, but I've got a feeling I can't take out enough cash to pay for it in one go. I don't know what the ATM cash withdrawal limit is. I've read online that it's 200 euros in one transaction. So I'm gonna pop out this morning and take out 200 euros and then pop out later, take out another 200 and I think I've got the rest knocking around. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit pricey, but you know, it's like getting your car serviced. You've got to get it done, haven't you? So I am just, I just can't wait to have a fully operational flute again because it's such a massive part of my life. Yeah, I've just been using the cheaper ones since I've been out here, but I feel good about doing that because I'm not having to worry about my main instrument in really noisy, crowded, drunken environments. So I'm half tempted to carry on using the cheaper one in situations like the pub gigs. Not the Cadies, the Cadies are civilised. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like they're, it's at risk there. Not constantly. You don't realise how stressed you are at looking after your instrument until you suddenly you're not looking after it anymore. Anyway, uh, I'm on the coffee, as you see. Uh, so yeah, nice relaxing morning. I think I'm gonna do some Portuguese learning first and then crack on with some comments and things and get dressed and stuff. I suppose I probably ought to do that really because I've been in my pyjamas for some days now. Oh, people are asking, did I do COVID tests? Yes, yes, I've been doing COVID tests. I brought some with me from the UK actually. I don't know how much they cost out here, but I know generally chemistry items do cost a lot more over here. So I always bring things like paracetamols, I normally bring sore throat sweets, but I didn't actually on this occasion, I didn't think of it. But I did bring my COVID tests in case they're very expensive out here. This apartment came with a lot of stuff and it's even come with a, an LFT test and some masks as well and some sanitizer. But I haven't used any of those. It's just out of date, it's just, just gone out of date. But um, I decided to just use my own because I just, I wasn't sure if I could be bothered to get my head around reading all the instructions because I know how mine work, you know, they're all a bit different. Anyway, yeah, they're all negative, so. I'm pretty confident it's not COVID and it doesn't feel like COVID. When I've had COVID, it's felt distinctly different. I made a right old mush for our dinner last night, didn't I, Ivy? But it was actually very tasty. I'm reheating it for breakfast, so think bubble and squeak, and I'm gonna make one of my epic fruit salads. When I was doing the COVID test, I see I bought some from home, but I didn't bring the packaging. They came in and I didn't have the proper wrapper, but I got a resourceful look. If you snip that off the egg box, you can pop it in there. There you go, my hack. I'm about to make a fruit salad. I'm gonna use this liquidy mango. Do you see how much give there is in that? I'm not squeezing it hard. But it's really liquid inside, so I'm gonna get in a mess basically. I was not joking about it being sloshy. Look, <laughs> I'm gonna like scrape that. Look, it's like I don't know what consistency will we call that pulp. It's too runny even for pulp, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna divide that between the bowls. I'm afraid to say the bananas were very squished. There's about, I don't know, three or four bananas worth in there because there's so much of it was unusable. One more orange and then a bit of yogurt and some nuts and some syrup would be lovely. It always amazes me how much juice comes out of this one orange. I feel like I need a pouring spout on the chopping board because it's quite hard to tip it on there without it going all over the surface and making everything sticky. Here's our two course breakfast. Look, that's the first bit, that's the second bit. There's lots of tuna in there, potatoes, carrots. There's loads of carrots in the fridge when we arrived. So I'm trying to sort of pop them into meals where appropriate. Mushrooms and broccoli in there. Really quite simple. A lot of chilli and ginger as well. Breakfast was very good. Thank you very much. Now I'm off on foot. I've left my boyfriend working for another two hours. And I'm going to try and find an ATM. Steps. Pigeons. Oh, I'm getting dripped on by trees. It's been raining. I have my umbrella in my bag there. Might have just popped in an Auchan supermarket and made a little impulse purchase. Look, these salmons were reduced. Um, I took a photo of the full price, I'll put it on screen, but they're down to 2.75, 2 euro 75. I'll put the sterling on screen. Obviously it's only accurate on the day of conversion. It will change. And I got my other half, some more of these Palvacasia wheat-free. These ones are gluten-free, in fact, made from cassava flour. I've mentioned before, he absolutely loved them. So got me some. Now I'm wandering around with frozen things in my hand and looking for an ATM. <laughs> now then, I found an ATM. Now, my friends Mandy and Lee warned me about the Euronet 
ATMs, they said they charge a bit, you know, got a bit of a transaction fee that you maybe don't necessarily need. And I also did a bit of research last night and it said, look out for the multi-banco written on it or MB. And I don't see it on this, so I'm going to give this one a miss. Look, I'm empty-handed. I popped back to the apartment briefly and dropped off my goodies and showed them to my most delighted boyfriend. Well, I had a limited degree of success with the multi-banco. I found one and it said MB on it. So I thought, right, hopefully this one's okay. I rejected the conversion. I think you have to reject the conversion to get a better deal. So I did all that. It wouldn't let me take out 400. So I tried again and it would let me take out 300. And then there was a lady behind me, so I didn't want to hold her up. So I walked down to another one and I tried to just take out an extra 100 and it wasn't having anything of it it was just saying you've reached your limit so um, IB's gonna lend me any extra I had a hundred already because I keep getting paid dribs and traps for little bits of playing that I'm doing out here so it's actually been mounding up and I've been using my card a little bit just to see if I could I've got a feeling that does incur a small like percentage I don't really know how it works I need to find that out um, so I've been proceeding with caution just paying for things on my card in case I'm getting charged but um, yeah, so between the two of us, we'll manage it and then I'll just have to pay him back <laughs> the next day. I'm just gonna sit at my desk and do some little admin bits and bobs now until he's ready to leave. I'm on the Metro, on my own. I'm not supposed to be on my own. We had a little hiccup. I'll tell you about it when it's quieter. Bonk, 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 bonk. It's like juddering. <laughs> Just this one. In true emo style, I think, this week. So this is what happened, and this is why I'm on my own and not with IB. So the plan was, we're gonna go together to get the flute and then come back to El Corte English to return an item that he bought because he got the wrong thing. But he sat down on the bench in the metro and said, I've forgotten it. So he had to go back and get it. I've got his bank card because I don't have enough cash to pay for my flute repairs. <laughs> so I've got to go and get some money out of his bank and add it to mine, go and get my flute. And then I'm going to meet him back, hopefully in Pingo Dos, and we'll have coffee and a cake or something, and then go on together to El Corte Inglés because he wouldn't mind a bit of a hand exchanging the thing or just returning it and trying to get a refund. So that's what's happened. Here's the next one. going one stop on this one. I never remember which door is the right one and I think this is the wrong one but I just want to show you the statues because I think they're really cool. Hello ladies. They're over the other side as well. Anyway look I'm going back. I think the other door's the right one for me. I nearly just got crashed into by somebody who was looking at their phone, sort of texting as they were walking, and I was looking at him, but he wasn't looking at me. <laughs> we both did a sudden sidestep. Oh, I remember this one before, yeah, I remember. That's the sort of image that you don't forget. Um, <laughs> it's because there's a bull ring at Campo Pequeno, where we're coming to now. Bulls, you know. Quite often the decoration for the metro is kind of to do with the area that it's in. It's gone all nice and quiet, hasn't it? Lovely. Poor old IB, he blipped his ticket before he came through, so he'll lose his 180 worth now of his journey. Because he had to bip it back out again and that. Well, I mind you actually, no, because if you use it within an hour, you still get it, don't you? No, he might be all right then. Good, that makes me feel a bit better about it. Right, I think it's this way. I think it can be very easy to get confused because they look kind of symmetrical, you know. You can get confused about which direction you're facing. There's a Continent supermarket there. I haven't been in one of those this time, actually. Maybe I will, but I think we've pretty much done most of our shopping now. That's the bull ring. I can't film it very well from here because there's things in the way. But there it is. In Portuguese bullfighting, they don't actually kill the bull. It's a little bit different. The wind's whipping up a bit. 
Okay, completely forgot about getting the money out. But look, 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 it's covered in plastic. And it had all like other bits stuck on it, but he's taken them off. He said, remove the plastic, well in Portuguese, and have a little play and see what you think. So, oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah, I used to feel awkward doing this, but I don't really anymore. I'm going to have a go anyway. It's cling film. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> no flu has ever been cling filmed, ever. <laughs> I'm like, when he first opened it, I was completely, like, hypnotised, <laughs> shall we say. I forgot my tripod again, didn't I? Let's get those out. Right then, oh my gosh. It is a very surreal experience right now. <laughs> I think I'm going to see if I can pay for the last bit with my card. It's just going to be easier. I haven't had the final bill yet, I'm anticipating 475 euros. So that was the initial quote. But I know sometimes things pop up. You know, it's like when you get your car fixed. Well, I presume I don't have a car. Oh, the flute, my spare flute fell apart in my hands in the session the other day, and the bottom two bits of it fell on the floor right on the end. But it seems to be playing okay. Sometimes it takes a while for the trauma to come out, though. Oh gosh, that feels good and tight there. That's been really loose and problematic for ages. do your head in. So it's 450 euros, job well done. I am so happy right now. That flute is, ah, oh, it's singing like a bell. It's perfect. I think the last time I had that done was 2018. So it has been six years. So it's not like I'm playing this every year, but oh my gosh, what a difference. Oh, I can't wait to like get practicing properly again. I haven't really been practicing since I've been here because it's always a bit awkward when you're staying in a, a hired apartment. You know, you don't know how the neighbors are gonna be. I did have a little chat to the man like, directly opposite in Portuguese and he's fine with it. Just said, as long as it's not in the night, I don't mind. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go meet my boyfriend now for coffee and cake, celebrate getting the flute back. Oh, I'm so happy. I still don't want to take it to that noisy bar though in case it gets smashed into smithereens. I'll stick with the, the other one for public stuff, I think, apart from the Irish sessions because they're a lot more civilized. You never quite know if they're gonna lumber onto the stage unexpectedly, they're not, the greatest at boundaries when they've had an absolute skinful. And on one of the nights I was playing here, I had a lady, she was drunk, and she was leaning up against me. She thought, I think she thought I was the wooden post that was next to me. And it wasn't, it was me. And I was just rooted to the spot, playing my flute. Like, you know, I can't demonstrate because I'm holding the camera with my arm. I was just like, I'm just going to have to keep really, really still, because if I move at all, she's going to fall straight over. She was leaning with all her weight on me and still chatting away to the bloke next to her. Anyway such as the life of the pub musician. Anyway, I thoroughly recommend Domingos Cairo's flute fixing service. They do other instruments, other wind instruments. I think they might do brass instruments as well. Brilliant, every time, flawless. I think I might be within my hour on here. Right, Carto direction. Is that a train coming this side? Oh, it might be, I don't know. Well, I can feel a breeze in my face, so I think maybe the other side. Yes, the other side. You can tell which way it's coming from by the way the wind direction's going, you know, because it sort of blows it up the channel, as it were. And yes, I was able to make that last bit of payment with my bank card. It's all puddly. It's a very interesting looking building over there, isn't it? I wonder what that is. I'm just on the way to meet my boyfriend in Pingo Dos. I think we're going to arrive at about the same time, actually. We've been in touch. That's a rather interesting shape as well, isn't it? Lots of digger action going on here. I'm going to be late now because I just accidentally had Google Maps on the driving route. So I could I was looking at it, I was thinking, no, I don't believe it. I'm going to cut through this bit. I'm going to cut through that bit. And I have been doing, but not first of all. If I'd have done it immediately, <laughs> it would have been better. Anyway, I'm about three minutes walk away. I can see the way I should have gone, but we got to go back to Gordon Glacier anyway. So we'll go back a simpler route. Oh, 
well, that was me just going the wrong way again. Those last shots. Oh, so colourful. It's lovely facades. Pretty sure it's down here now, anyway. Look oh, at that lovely blue and white building there. That's absolutely spectacular. Right, we're nearly at Pinkertos. I can see the sign protruding out there. Oh, look at this. This was actually 5 99 but that's back on the alcohol nathish. So it's like the salted codfish with cream. There's potatoes in there. I remembered from last time. Because last time I got potatoes as well, thinking it was just fish and creamy stuff. And it wasn't going to be this big. Um, but that was more than enough. So I got some spinach on the side. That was another 99 cents. 79 cents for my delicious looking pastel de nata, which I'm going to have for dessert if I've got any room. And the Mayo Delight, the milky coffee, was one euro and nine cents. We're off to El Corte Inglés now with very full bellies, kind of staggering. <laughs> We're in a lift. We accidentally got the wrong one. We're going down. <laughs> Can you press three quick for some gas gas in? <laughs> it's minus four. Ooh, we're going back up again. Let's oh. just get out of here and yeah. find some Okay, we've achieved our mission, but it took blooming ages to get a refund. It would have been much quicker to just get a credit note and buy something else of the equivalent value, but we didn't need to do that. Anyway, here's a cautionary tale for you. If you're in Portugal and you want to buy a keyboard for your laptop, it will be a Portuguese keyboard. And you might think, oh, that's no problem. I'll get used to it. I be can testify that no, you don't. It's awkward and your hands just, yeah, no. And anyway, so even though on the box, it was clearly a British layout keyboard, it was in fact a Portuguese layout one. And the man said, no, no, any keyboard you buy in Portugal will be a Portuguese keyboard layout. Even if on the box it shows a different one, it's just they only make the same box. But all the different regional variations. So there we are. Anyway, he's got his money back now and we're heading down to his favourite shoe shop in Lisbon, aren't you? Well, that's so, favourite. <laughs> hopefully to buy some shoes because I mean, <laughs> no, probably better not show, him, show them your shoes that are falling apart and got a big flappy bit hanging off like this. But that's, that's well, what it's doing right now. You, you've worn them out with all the <laughs> That's my fault, is it? Yeah. How did I wear out the side bits, though? Well, yeah, they've just What's broken there? as a result of this action that's going on every day. OK. We're coming back towards the roundabout. That is Marrakech de Pombal now. We're retracing our steps from the other day, actually. I really enjoyed the walk down Avenida de Liberdad, which goes down there, all the way down to the Baixa area. I mentioned this the other day when we did it in the vlog, but it's so pleasant because it's downhill all the way. <laughs> And oh, maybe jump then. Um, yeah, so we're going to go down there. Oh, we just got given freebies by the European Parliament. Well, representatives of in the street. They just randomly said, "Here, have these page markers and stickies." My favourite. Yeah. growing in flower beds are they spider plants are they spider plants i always used to have spider plants in my house i don't see them so much anymore maybe that's a fashion that's passed does anybody still have a spider plant and every so often they'd shoot out these great big runners and baby spider plants would grow i don't know if these actually are spider plants hey look at this i don't know if you can see those contours there it's where the roots are growing underneath it's lifted those cobblestones up in a very smooth manner it's a bit smoother i think than the uk because when it's like flat paving slabs, you get this very sharp edge and a steep drop off the side, don't you? But this is all like smooth. We're actually walking on the other side of the road. Last time we walked on that side and this time we're here and we're getting to see things we didn't see last time, like this rather beautiful statue that's right ahead of us here. Looks like some sort of war memorial, actually. Yes, it is the Great War. Yeah, First World War. I've just popped around the other side to have a look. It's a bit better lit from this angle as well. Hey, look at that beautiful lily. Is that a lily? I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And it's one of a number of them, actually. See, I told you, here they are. Look, there's a rather beautiful stone sculpture there. An old man with a flowing beard and a jug, which I presume is supposed to be flowing down here into this area of water here, this little pond. We've got these rather beautiful splashes of color here. And before I was here, a gentleman was leaning over taking shots of it as well. This is an homage to the river. There's one of those QRs if you wish to pause the video and see what it's all about. I wasn't expecting to have such a different experience just being on the other side of the road, but it is quite different. Got a little bridge to cross here, going over the uh, the homage to River Tejo. Mm. 
Yeah, that's the Elevador de Gloria. I'm just, I was just putting that Elevador out. I filmed that the other day on one of my vlogs, actually. We don't know what this is, right? We're outside um, Rushvorodorsh metro station. I'm just thinking, what's this? But um, the reason I'm investigating particularly is because I've got some statues. Oh, yeah, dear. This is all shiny. Look, people have been giving it a touch. Like, a like pound, pound, pound. Like yeah. putting the paving in. Aren't they the pavers? Yeah, look, because there's a bit of tile there. We found a thing, look. Tribute from the city of Lisbon to the pavers who build the ground we tread. And they work blooming hard and they work by hand. That's a castle up there. Do you see the sunlight on it? I went up there in a vlog, the castle vlog. I'll link that in the description in case you missed it. This is Rossio Station, it's ever so famous. So ornate, incredible. You can see the castle even more clearly from here. It's really hard not to stop and just go up at this amazing station. Oh, look where we are again. Convento do Carmo. Maybe I should go there and visit it. I, I haven't been since I've been vlogging and I've been vlogging for seven and a half years. Might be time for a second visit. So just to quickly recap, I have said it in previous vlogs, but that was there before the earthquake. Then it was partially destroyed by the earthquake and never fully rebuilt again. And they've left it there as a bit of a monument and it's now an archaeological museum. The sun's going down now and the light's kind of gone really even and I don't know, it's kind of given a clarity just the way the lighting is right now to everything. Now that one reminds me of something off Deep Space Nine or something or Doctor Who. Well this is a right repeat of the other day, it's just starting to rain. Last time we came here to try and buy shoes, the heavens empty. Do you remember that? Did you watch that one? That was, that was extreme, that was. I quite liked editing the footage of all the rain. It's, it makes me feel so cosy when I'm just editing it in a nice warm and cosy flat. <laughs> oh, not bad prices. I would love some. But do you know, I haven't got any room to take them back. There's literally no point. I was just talking to the camera. Just saying there's no point in me buying any nice shoes because I can't fit them in the suitcase. Well, he's got his new shoes and now dinner is well on the way. Look, it's those salmon steaks or whatever you want to call them that I bought earlier. I've sautéed some veggies with some spices as well. And in that pan is rice and it's cooked actually. I'm thinking once the salmon's done, I might put the rice in there and stir it all up. I'm not quite sure yet. I've got a few people to thank actually. I've had a little flurry of buy me a coffee donations and also PayPal donations as well. So I would like to thank Ruth, Alison, I don't know how to pronounce this one, Angelilj, Angelilj, Angeli, Angel, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but thank you so much. So those guys donated via Buy Me A Coffee and also via PayPal, they had a lovely gift from Angela and also Kirsty as well. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to you all for that because it really helps to support the channel. Speaking of the channel, if you'd like to watch more of it, do feel free to click this playlist that's up here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.